So I don't know, uh, I won't be able to monitor Facebook and LinkedIn for questions, but uh, anyone that wants to log in, uh, if you're a GOB member, make sure that you go to your private calendar and log in. Um, and excuse me just a minute here, Matt, it's asking me to log in separately. Okay. And, um, and we can go around the room and let the people uh, that are um, uh, in the uh, actual uh, meeting with us today, uh, see if they have any particular questions. And if they don't, I always can come up with lots of questions and I'm sure you can volunteer lots of answers. So sure. Um, and and I do have a presentation that we that I could go over if 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 needed, but I think I think Trevor's seen it three times now. So <laughs> I don't want to bore him to tears. Uh, well, if, I knew, if, I Trevor, thought, if Trevor has seen Jim it, said, he ought to have questions. Jim Jim said everybody that shows up gets a thousand bucks. That's why I can't. <laughs> but I said I'm Matt was too. paying it. <laughs> but Me I too. said Matt was paying it. <laughs> it's from the proceeds of his book. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wish I had that much money from the book sales. <laughs> uh, so sadly, I don't have a question because I've I'm well. I could probably do his presentation for him. I've seen it so many times, but it's you an awesome presentation. Could. So we shouldn't hold it out for the other ones that haven't. Well, okay. And, do some, and Jim's always got questions. Yeah. And um, I'll I'll go around the room then and uh, and just ask if. Uh, Alina, you're a guest, uh, Samo Financial. Would you happen to have a question or want to ask something um, of Matt? Jim, thank you. Uh, well, it sounds like you have a diverse audience. For me, it would be helpful to uh, get to know Matt first. I, I'm sorry, but I don't know much about Matt other than his first and last name. So ideally, I would like to hear slightly more. And I apologize to Trevor and others that have heard that more than once already. Um, I'd like to hear it at least once. Well, we do have a couple of new guests in. So, Matt, do you want to do an introduction? And in, uh, yeah, in well, you know, well, why don't, why don't I just let's let's run through the presentation because I think it'll give everybody what what they're what they're looking for. So, give me one second to pull that up. Uh, I know and it's so one. good, I don't mind seeing it for the fourth time. How about that? For a <laughs> Thanks. Vote of I appreciate that. It really and, is. And I have, a, it's a fascinating way to present the topic and it's very personalized and uh, I always enjoy that. Trevor, you will get a thousand bucks, I guarantee you. Jim promised me. Uh, uh, well, okay. So Jim's promising everyone a thousand bucks. I, I have two versions. I have, I have four versions of this. Of well, this you better actually. give the good one then. So I have I have the, the, the one for, for, you know, just like passive investors and then the one for syndicators. I'm assuming I should do the one for syndicators here. And then I have two versions. I have one without prizes and I have one with prizes. So should I do the one with prizes? That way Jim can save himself several thousands of dollars and, and you could maybe get a prize if you get the questions right. Does that, does that sound like a fair way to do it? I okay, think all right. So no one's gonna, no one's gonna bug Jim for, for thousands of dollars. <laughs> I'll do that. So here, let me share my screen. Let me uh, go full screen on this thing. And uh, can you all see my, my smiling face there? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm wearing my Star Wars shirt today, though, by the way. I just have to say I'm very proud of the Star Wars shirt because it is May, May the 4th, right? So may the 4th be with you. Um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Matt Pacetti, um, your backstage guide to, uh, to, to passive investing. And, and tonight I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about um, the top five keystone concepts that I use to build my portfolio, okay? And so as we go through the presentation, you'll learn everything about me or, or at least a lot of things about me. Um, just, you know, quick disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a CPA. There are great professionals that you can go to for professional advice. This is not advice, I'm just telling you the story of my background. Um, and there will be a quiz at the end. So make sure you pay attention because if you do, you can win some fabulous prizes. Okay. So let's get started. Um, so I wrote a book called Backstage Guide to Real Estate. And the subtitle is Produce Passive Income, Write Your Own Story, and Direct Your Dollars Towards Positive Change. And the reason why I wrote it was I, there's a meetup group that, that I ran in Boston and over 
a period of a few years, it grew. I mean, we got to, to a pretty good size where we would have, you know, over a hundred people on average at any of our events. And, you know, a lot of the people who attended the events owned maybe a duplex or a triplex in the area, but we're not investing in out-of-state syndications. And that was something that I had been doing um, and that I found very lucrative and was sharing information about that with, with these folks and uh, would bring in different guest speakers from all around the country. And they would come in and they would talk about the different deals uh, and different things and different aspects of, of syndication. And people started to get interested. And people would come to me and say, hey, Matt, I know that you invest passively in real estate syndications. And, and just for, for you guys listening, like uh, two thirds of my portfolio are deals I'm a limited partner in, right? So I'm a big proponent of passive investing. I actually just invested in two deals uh, this past month uh, from a passive perspective. But then I actively do deals. And I have a deal that I'm, I'm working on right now. We just closed a deal recently. So I, I, I kind of do a little bit of both. And the people at the meetup knew that. So they would come to me and say, hey, Matt, I'm thinking about doing my first uh, syndication. Would you tell me if this is a good deal or not? Like, should I do this deal? And I would tell them that, um, that I, would, I will never tell people whether they should do an investment or not, um, but that I'm happy to look at it and you know, point out some things that maybe I might ask you know, the syndicator about like some questions some things that kind of, you know, I, I don't understand. And so I would end up going and meeting these people and spend an hour or two kind of going through the underwriting with them. And obviously I'd have to travel to somewhere and do it. And it, you know, it was taking two to three hours out of my day every time I did one of these. And as the group grew and got bigger and bigger, more and more people were asking uh, for me to go ahead and help them. And so I was happy to help, but the big problem was I was running out of time. You know, there's only so many hours in the day. And if I kept meeting with people, I would just, I couldn't do my own business. So what I decided to do was, hey, what if I write this all down? And if I write it all down, then I can just give people, you know, this PDF that I might make. And then they'd have all the information on the deal. And so I wrote this little thing I called the Passive Investor's Handbook. It never saw the light of day because what it was was about 80 pages of just like really boring, very dense technical information on like how to look at a deal, which was good to have that information, but it was not really written in a way that was easy for people to understand. So I took about a year. And I took all the information, all the hard facts that I had in this version, and I turned it into uh, the backstage guide to real estate. And what I did was I decided to take my entire life, uh, or at least my, my real estate portion of my life, and um, tell that story. Because the story was fun and interesting, as you'll see in a minute, because I'm going to go through it on a very high level with you. Um, but I also would share the things that I learned. So starting off knowing nothing about real estate all the way to where I am now, an owner of thousands of apartment units. So, so the early stages of the book talk about, you know, what's an asset, what's a liability. And at the end of the book, I'm doing air rights deals and 1031 exchanges, okay? And I share with the reader the 18 different keystone concepts that I learned along, the, along my journey. Um, I also have throughout the book, 60 different real estate terms that I define. Um, and so, you know, the book starts off with my wife actually getting a, a job opportunity in Miami. So we lived in New York. She got this job opportunity completely out of the blue in Miami. We ended up taking it and moving to Miami. I quit my, my corporate life, and I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. And when we moved down to Miami, I, I had been working in the advertising world. And so I was looking for a job in the advertising world while, right when we moved down. But I was also had a lot of free time because I was at, unemployed at this point because I had quit my job in New York. And I finally got around to, to listening because I did the, the audio book, listening to that purple book, right? Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which 99% of anybody who I ever hear talk about real estate say that this book inspired them and it inspired me too. Um, so I'm listening to this. I'm listening to Kiyosaki talk about developing uh, multiple streams of passive income. I mean, that was my big takeaway, right? Multiple streams of passive income. So I'm hearing him tell me this, right? Uh, at the same time, whenever I'm taking a break from Kiyosaki, I'm listening to the Hamilton soundtrack. Now, or excuse me, cast album, the Hamilton cast album. Hamilton had come out about nine months prior, if 
or so. Um, and uh, it was a big, big, big hit on Broadway. And the really cool thing is that my wife and I had invested in the in in Hamilton. And I'll, I'll I can talk a little bit more about the Broadway investing a little bit later. But um, as you'll see in a moment, I have a background in theater, and that's what my wife does full time. And so we invested in the show, but we were just also really big fans of it. So I'm listening, you know, Kiyosaki, passive income, passive income. I'm listening to the cast of Hamilton telling me, do not throw away your shot. Do not throw away your shot. Meanwhile, I'm trying to get a job in advertising, which I had been doing for 18 years. I didn't really love it. I was kind of burned out. And I had been doing real estate as a hobby for 10 years. And that's kind of really what I wanted to do. And so after listening to Kiyosaki and listening to the cast of Hamilton, they're just all egging me on. I said, you know what? I'm not going to look for a job in advertising. I don't want to do it. I've done pretty well with real estate as a hobby. I'm going to go ahead and do real estate full time. Um, and so I decided to do that. And then that's where I go back in time. And so now at, at the beginning of chapter two, I go back in time and go back to 2001 when I had an advertising agency that I was running and I was told uh, that, uh, that and, 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 and um, my business started to implode and I had 90 days to get out of my apartment. Um, but before we get to there, let me, let me just clue you in on the early days. So this is me in 1976 before my first day of preschool, standing outside of an apartment that we were renting. And the, this picture is significant in the book for another reason, which I'm not gonna spoil, but um, it's also significant because when I was in preschool it was the first time I was in a show. I was the bird in a, a, a little play about the creation of the world actually. And so <laughs> that's when I caught the acting bug and I got really into it. I was involved in, in plays and community theaters and in high school. And actually while I was in high school, uh, I, I started working at Disney World. I, I actually worked at Disney World as a little kid for a little bit of time dancing in front of the castle. But but here I am at, uh, you know, what, se 17 years old, uh, dressed as Mowgli from the Jungle Book, dancing down Main Street, USA, uh, when I used to work at Disney World, dressed in a loincloth, nonetheless, and a wig. So, uh, yeah, uh, I moved to New York to pursue a career in theater. I went to the American Musical Dramatic Academy, which is a musical theater conservatory. I graduated from there. And here's what I look like in 1994, all Beverly Hills 90210 kind of looking, ready to go uh, and, and, and audition. And, and I auditioned, I did well three days after I graduated from that program, I was off on the road doing a show. And, and I spent about six years uh, doing uh, shows, about, actually about five years. Uh, I did 15 different productions in five years all across the U.S., uh, tours and I, I did a, an international tour and I had a great time doing it. This is just some of the shows I was in. Uh, but I started tinkering around with computers. There's you know a lot more detail and color on all of this stuff in the book. But uh, I, 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 the thing that I learned from the acting days was about being persistent, right? Julie Andrews, who you might know from uh, Mary Poppins, or she was uh, the lead in uh, The Sound of Music, right? So Julie Andrews is attributed with saying that perseverance is failing 19 times and succeeding on the 20th. And for those of you who appreciated the fact that I'm wearing the Star Wars shirt, Captain Tar Taggart from Galaxy Quest, you know, if you've ever watched that, it's a sci-fi spoof movie. It's an awesome movie. He's always saying, never give up, never surrender, right? So by being persistent, I was able to succeed in theater because you face so much rejection, audition after audition after audition. And I actually tell in the book stories, uh, three different stories about how persistence helped me even before the real estate. And it's helped me immensely in real estate as well. Um, I started tinkering around with computers dot com, uh, you know, the heydays were going on. I started working uh, and, and I worked over the, the a period of, of, of a number of years on on, on Madison Avenue, <clears throat> working at a bunch of different agencies. But the first one was Pacetti Productions, which was an agency that I started on my own. And, and what happened was I, I, I as I mentioned, I got I was told I had to to my, my business was imploding because the dot com bubble had burst. And my landlord told me I had 90 days to get out. So I went, I found a, a job working at Showtime. It was a client of mine. And I also went and um, I bought a place. 
So instead of renting an apartment, I actually bought an apartment. And two years later, well, about almost two and a half years later, I sold that apartment and I saw my initial investment more than quadruple. So um, this was the, uh, the, the building. And it's interesting because we're on a we're on a uh, you know real estate meetup for multifamily. So a lot of times people are buying entire buildings. I, I just bought this one little unit, right? So I had those two windows. I didn't have the whole thing. But um, what I did without even realizing it was I added value to the property. Um, I fixed up the unit itself because it needed some work, um, but I also helped out. So it, it was a co-op. And so it was run by a co-op board. And I volunteered to be part of a committee. And we redid the lobby. <clears throat> we worked, we hired an interior designer and we redesigned the lobby and we redid the hallways and we redid the elevators. And so all of a sudden I had a really nice looking apartment in a very updated building. So, you know, real estate prices were doing really well at the time, but we also added value. And that um, I didn't realize it at the time. Um, I realized that it now sort of in hindsight is that I kind of was adding value in a bunch of these deals that I was doing early on without ever realizing that that was kind of a thing. But figuring out how you can add that value to, to, to the asset itself and to the community can be fantastic, right? And so that's keystone concept number four. Uh, those are two of the, the keystone concepts I'm sharing with you today. I'm not going to go into the details here, but basically, you know, I put thirty thousand dollars down on the uh, the the apartment when I bought it, and when I walked away, I walked around walked away with one hundred and thirty profit, right? So uh, did very well on that deal. And I said, how do I do that again, right? I, I I really was hooked on real estate, so I went ahead and I bought this. But then again, not the whole building because it's New York City, just the unit, right? So I bought this unit with the profits I had made from that first deal. Um, and then I decided, hey, I'm a real estate genius. I did my first deal. I quadrupled my money. Why don't I do that again? So then I bought my first uh, uh, investment property, which was a which was actually in in Goshen, Connecticut, at this beautiful lakefront community. Uh, what I ended up buying was just this one acre of trees. Um, but over time, we went ahead and we built it. And this is where I learned what real estate was really made out of, like literally from the ground up. We cleared trees, we dug up, this is us pouring the foundation, and we did the whole thing and came out with a beautiful house. Um, and this house is really what set me on the path to where I am today, because I, I had initially intended that it would be a place that I could use as a, just a place to get away from New York City. Um, and then rent it out from time to time. It ended up being something that I rented out ever since the day we got the, the, the certificate of occupancy and it was rented um, as short-term rentals. So I learned a lot about dealing with people, uh, dealing with leases, um, and also dealing with like all the fun accounting stuff that you have to worry about and things like depreciation. I learned a ton from, from the house besides just the actual construction of it. Um, I then went ahead and actually bought a, uh, a, a, a duplex. Uh, and sort of, I call it the accidental house hack because I didn't know that there was a term called a house hack and I didn't know that that was really a thing. What I knew was I needed to sell that apartment on the Upper West Side and move into something bigger because I now at this point I was married and we had a kid on the way. So uh, when looking uh, for places to buy in Brooklyn, I, I realized that I could find a, a two family and, and buy the whole thing by, so it was more than what my initial budget was, but from the rental income, uh, I actually be paying less. So I bought um, this property, a duplex, uh, the upstairs unit, uh, the, the, the two units were the same, except for the downstairs unit had access to the backyard. And there was tenants in the upstairs unit and they were paying more than half of what the mortgage payment was. So I was like, oh, great, this is awesome. And if I ever need to leave, I can rent the downstairs unit for more money because it has the backyard and also we renovated it, made it look even nicer uh, and have a nice property that would be cash flowing. Um, so that brings us to the point where then uh, about a year after being in that apartment, my wife got a job opportunity out of the blue, which you'll remember from the first chapter and we moved to Miami. And when we were in Miami, after listening to Kiyosaki and Hamilton, I decided to go ahead and listen to the cast and take my shot and move into real estate full time. Um, and that's when I realized that, you know, Miami wasn't really necessarily the best market to look for real estate. It's kind of speculative. Uh, prices are very high. And I decided that I needed to explore 
other markets. So that's the third keystone concept that I'm sharing with you. It's the eighth one in the book, explore other markets. It's okay to invest out of state. You got to invest where the numbers are going to make sense, uh, even if it's not in your backyard. In Miami, the numbers just didn't make sense. And so I started flipping properties. So here's some like before and after shots. I don't want to dwell on this too much. We only have a certain amount of time. My favorite before and after is this one because this was disgusting and it looked like this. Very beautiful at the end. Um, I also did some single family turnkey investments. Um, I still own to this day. They cash flow really well. Um, so that, that was fun. And then I started to learn about syndication. Um, I uh, invested in a deal in Albuquerque that didn't really go as it planned. And that's when I learned that I really needed to keep an eye on the three deal pillars. So, you know, the sponsor, the market, and the deal, right? That's when I really, <laughs> really learned, especially the sponsor being the most important. Um, that, that, that that's what I needed to keep an eye on. At that point, I decided, you know what, I need to chart a course to, uh, to, 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 to where I'm going. And so I started investing passively in deals. So, so these are a bunch of deals that I did passively. Um, and then I finally found my first syndication. Um, remember, I said you need to explore other markets. So I had the whole United States to choose from. I could have invested in the Cleveland, Akron area. That's where I had been flipping some houses, got some relatives up there. And I looked in that area, but didn't really find anything that was making sense. But I was looking, and I was also looking in Florida. I was living in Miami at the time. I grew up in Orlando. My parents still live in Orlando. I was looking at anything from like Jacksonville down to Sarasota. I found a couple of deals that looked promising, but... You know, they, nothing was making sense. I, I was putting in offers and just getting blown out of the water. Um, I ended up looking in Kansas City. I had spent a summer there during my acting days. I thought I wasn't going to like it. Absolutely loved it. I had a really good friend who moved there. So I said, you know, what? why don't I ch check out Kansas City? And I started finding in Kansas City some deals that made sense. I underwrote over 100 deals. When I was about 20 deals in, I'm talking about full underwriting. When I was about 20 uh, deals in, I said, you know what? I want to start keeping a spreadsheet because this is taking way too long. And so this is just a little screenshot I did of my spreadsheet that's much, much longer. But I think it was 114. I counted them up and I wrote it in the book, but I think it was 114 deals that I did before I got my first deal, which brings us back to Keystone concept number two, right? Be persistent, right? It's okay to invest out of state, be persistent. Um, so, uh, and, and I did a syndication, which I'm, I'm sure everybody knows if you're a GOB network, what a syndication is. And, and I did my first syndication as a sponsor and it was Sunrise Properties, 132 units in Lawrence, Kansas, 10 million, almost $10 million purchase price. Uh, and, uh, and it was awesome. We did a really great job. I wrote a whole chapter about the whole story about trying to uh, find the deal and get the deal operating the deal. And then ultimately that very happy ending where we sold the deal and made a lot of money for our investors. They were really happy. Um, one of the things that I did on this, which is really important. And again, y'all are in this network, you know about this. Choose partners who know more than you do, right? You're looking for a deal. You're going to go to somebody like a gym, right? Somebody who is more experienced than you for the new people. And, and, and you're going you're gonna to talk with them and you're going to say, hey, you know, Jim, I found this great deal. Can you help me take this down? You know, what do you think of this underwriting? And, and is this something you partner with me on? Jim, on the other end of it, the last sentence here, he's going to reach down and help other people, right? He wants to help people and, and help them because he's had people that helped him get to where he is, Right. And I'm sorry, I'm picking on you, Jim, but um, <laughs> they, they um, you know, so, so as you grow in this business, you know, choosing people who know more than you do is really important, I think. Um, I always try to surround myself with people who know more than I do. Um, but I also try to help people because there are people that I know more than I, I have more experience than, right? So I try to help them up. And, and through that way, I think that, that we've created really nice communities here. I mean, there's people that I, I don't even see everybody who's on here, but I see Angel, I see Trevor, I see Jim, all of the three of them I've done things with. We support one another. We try to help one another. Um, and, and, and I think we've got, there's a wonderful community of people in this multifamily syndication world who all try to lift each other up. So um, choose partners who know more than you do. 
And that was my partner, Justin Martinez, who I partner with on the vast majority of my deals. So we took down this property. Uh, you know, we did the whole due diligence, right? I walked personally all 132 units. There was a team of people, but but I did watch set foot in every one of them. Uh, in the middle, I'm there. I'm, we're scoping the drains, right? We're, we've got a, a there's a camera on the end of that thing, and we're checking to make sure that all the the um, the plumbing lines go out clearly to the sewer, so we don't have to worry about broken lines. And we're checking the electric, right? Make sure there's no aluminum. Make sure there's none of those Federal Pacific breakers, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and then the last two chapters of the book, I talk about, you know, I, I sold some air rights. Uh, so I basically sold this right air and bought this six unit. Um, and it was a 1031 exchange. And so, uh, I, I did the 1031. And so that leads into the, the to, to, to that thing. And I, and I did some value add and stuff like that. And like, look at this point, I've sponsored a whole bunch of deals. I've grown my portfolio quite a bit. Um, we've got another 418 units in Fort Worth that's under contract. We've got four deals that uh, that have gone full cycle on four properties, and those have all done better than than what we had uh, projected. You know, so that's been great. And um, but also my limited partner, like I've grown a lot as a limited partner, and I've invested in. You know, at this point, I'm in over 10,000 units altogether. When you look at my limited. Uh, partner portfolio, and you look at my uh, the, the deals because I've got almost three thousand units that I've uh, that I'm going to be a GP on when, when this new one closes. So um, yeah, and I've exited a bunch of the multifamily deals, which is great. And there's more that are exiting now. I'm probably going to need to make another slide soon. Um, and then the last section of the book, because that that pretty much ends the book. The last section of the book is really for people who are interested in, in passively investing. I go through like, here's questions that you should ask sponsors with like a you know thumbs up, fingers crossed for thumbs down. And then I get into details uh, on a lot of stuff. Um, and, and then I recap the Keystone concepts and then I got a glossary of the 60, uh, 60 definitions and that's it. That's the backstage guide to real estate. And, and you know, just to get back to that, that, that subtitle, right? It's really what I want people to do. I want them to be able to hopefully with this book, right? The promise of the book is that you're going to be able to produce passive income such that you can write your own story, whatever that story is for you. And then you're going to be able to direct those dollars to hopefully positive change. You know, I try to make really great improvements on the communities that we invest in, make life better for the residents and for the staff and profitable for investors. And I have successfully done that. Uh, where we can make this a win-win-win kind of situation. Um, and uh, that's basically it. I have some other slides that I'm not going to go into um, because I, I think we have some questions and stuff, but on sort of the evolution of my person and my brand that kind of came about as a result of writing the book. Um, but I want to leave enough time for questions and answers. And then I also want to make sure we have time to to, to get to the quiz and, and, and give away fabulous prizes. So um, why don't we uh, open this up to questions? <clears throat> and then once that's over, we'll, we'll, do, the, we'll do the quiz. That's a great story. So when is the Broadway show coming up? <laughs> the Broadway show? Oh, so- I'm totally expecting it from a New York guy. Come on, I'm right here. I'll buy I hear you, time. Alina. I want to know too. <laughs> so, so um, the, the the about the Broadway stuff. I, I don't know if this is ever going to be a Broadway show, but about the Broadway stuff. I don't know. I have some friends that are writers. I could ask them. Hey, does you can go Broadway. Broadway. I'm I'm fine with going to East Side, West Side. You tell me. I'll, I'll go. <laughs> are you Are you Alina? You're in. Oh, that's right. You're you're in. Oh, you're in Jersey, aren't you? Yeah, I yeah. remember that. Yeah. So um, so uh. For, for me and the musical stuff, I, I team up with my wife and we've actually produced a couple of Broadway shows, um, Moulin Rouge, which is running right now and American Utopia, which closed recently because it was a limited engagement. We won Tony Awards for those. So that's, uh, those are back there. So I, I won some Tony Awards, which is really cool, really fun. But that's something that I do on the side. It's not my full-time thing. It is my wife's full-time job. Um, but it's something that we'll we'll collaborate on together. But my full time job is uh, is the real estate stuff. But hey, no, who knows? Maybe we'll turn it into a musical. We're working on some new musicals right now and that are in development. Maybe I'll talk to one of the writers uh, and say, "Hey, do you think this uh, this has any legs?" I don't know. I don't know if this is a musical. A musical on syndication would be super cool. 
<laughs> for us, for us real estate nerds, yes, but I don't know if that would really appeal to the masses. But maybe I don't know. It could be interesting. I've never thought. I've actually never thought about it. Um, There's enough of us that I think could be super cool. <laughs> well, then I'd have to cast it with all you know syndicators. It'd be like a you know little. I'm raising my theater. hand. <laughs> well, yeah. Matt, guess who will be in the audience? All of the, the LPs, all of the passive investors. Oh, there you go. Know. I don't know. Maybe we can make something out of this. Sure. Excellent. Great story. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. So, so where are you at uh, right now? Where are you based? I'm in Brooklyn. Oh, you're still in Brooklyn. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we were in Miami. And then we moved to Boston. So then my wife, so out of the blue, my wife got the job. My my wife's awesome. She just is. I hope she's listening to this too. No, I don't think she is, but um, she she is though legit awesome. And so they she got recruited for this job in Miami completely out of the blue. And so we moved down there. And then she got a call from someone she had known for millions of years and, and, and worked not not at the same company, but had you know been in the business with for years. Uh, in, in New York, and we got a phone call. And honestly, like we, Miami's great. I'm not knocking Miami, but it wasn't like our cup of tea. And so we got a phone call from New York, and we we're like, oh, good, we're going back to New York. And she, she took, because why would this person be calling her if not to probably, you know, offer her a job? And so Erica took the call. Uh, she was out on maternity leave, actually. We were having our second child. And, um, the woman uh, said, Hey, you know, I, you know, started talking with her and was like, so what are your thoughts on Boston? We were like, Boston, but we were like, we like Boston. Like we've been to Boston. We've gone and visited Boston. We're like, we could do Boston. And so we lived in Boston for four years. My wife was running a theater there. Um, and that company though was growing and growing and growing. And so as they continued to expand, they uh, created a new position for her to oversee all the programming for all of North America. But they wanted her to do that from the, from the headquarters uh, their North America, the North American headquarters. They're they're based in 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 the UK. They're huge in the UK, um, and they're growing here. And they they said, you know, we want you to work from the, the Manhattan office. So we moved back to New York. Awesome, very yeah. nice. Yeah, awesome. so that was like nine months ago. It's like and and the last summer that we moved back. Yeah, very nice. Are you still continuing to do both so LPs and GPs? Like yeah, the- yeah. I mean, like we we just I closed. Uh, we're, I closed on one GP deal already. We have another one that we'll be closing on later this month. I also sold one of our deals last month, which was fun. Um, but I've also invested in, I think, three or four syndications uh, as a passive investor. I invest in my own deals, obviously, too, but about three or four syndications this year so far. Excellent. And uh, still with the same partner? I, so I work with different partners depending on the deal, but 90% of the deals that I do, I do with, uh, with Justin and another gentleman named Albert. We tend to work a lot together. We really enjoy working together with one another. Um, this next deal that, I'm per- that, I'm, that we're purchasing, um, Justin actually is one of the owners of it. So he wanted to do it, but it w- might have been like kind of like a weird conflict of interest to be selling your thing to yourself. So he he decided not to get involved in that. But most of the time, I do work with those those two partners. But um, I have done thing. I like this one I'm doing right now is not with them. So. Mm-hmm. Got it. And so when you work with partners, what is your main role on the deal? Yeah. So I'm a PMI certified project management professional. I'm really good at managing people and budgets and timelines. That's what I did in the advertising world for 18 years. Um, so that's what I'm really good at. So I work a lot on the asset management. Um, you know, when I work with Albert and Justin, Justin has a background and, and his brother in uh, sort of like exterior construction type stuff. So they tend to deal with a lot of the exterior capex types of projects. And Albert has a background as an actuary. So he tends to deal a little bit more with, with all the financial stuff and dealing with the lender. Uh, and I tend to focus on, you know, managing the asset, uh, leading uh, the asset management calls that we have uh, at least once a week and dealing with the interior updates and, and, and looking at the market surveys and determining what are we doing? Because I, I don't have a degree in marketing, but having been around it for 18 years, I, I, I know a lot about marketing. So I, I'm able to sort of lend a hand uh, with that as well. Uh, so the marketing of the property to, to get prospective residents in. And so that's the kind of stuff that I work on. And, you know, all of us will work on 
<clears throat> we all have relationships with different brokers. So different ones of us will find certain deals, underwrite it if it looks good, bring it to the team. We all look at it together, uh, put an LOI. And you know, by the time we're getting to an LOI, we've already kind of figured out, okay, here's what our GP team is going to look like. And we'll, and we'll also discuss, hey, you know, okay, the purchase price is this. We're going to have to raise this much capital. All right. Do you think you, you know, between us, can we all do it? How much do you think you could do and blah, blah, blah. And so we get the whole team together. Um, sometimes we'll bring in other people too, to help out on different aspects. The, you know, we had one deal that we bought that was f- four properties. And we're like, Justin can't do all that exterior CapEx himself. There's too much stuff. There's foundation work. So we brought in two other GPs to help out with all that stuff. And also that one was located in Houston and none of us are in Houston and the two people that we brought in are in Houston. So we were able to augment the team for all the different tasks that were needed and the necessity to have some boots on the ground there. And so we'll look at it from that perspective and just make sure that there's really good, nice, clearly defined roles for everybody and see where everybody kind of fits in to the puzzle uh, prior to even presenting an LOI to uh, to the seller. Because we want to make sure we've got a solid team and that we're going to be able to close on that deal. Uh, and then we'll present an LOI. And then most of the time we don't get the deal. And sometimes we do. Excellent. And are you guys concentrating on specific markets? Um, we really like Texas a lot. Um, I did uh, quite a few deals, as you saw earlier, in, in the Kansas City or, or greater Kansas City area, because uh, you know Lawrence is really not the Kansas City MSA, but it's adjacent. And um, the... It, I would love to do more deals in Kansas City, but you know, I don't even own anything there anymore because we got r- nice offers and you know we executed our business plans really well and, and we got nice offers and we went ahead and, and sold those properties, um, had nice returns for our investors. I'd love to buy more there, but I can't find anything that makes sense uh, from a numbers perspective, but we are finding deals Uh, in Texas, sometimes in Dallas, and sometimes in in church area markets. Like we have a deal that we bought in Temple last year that is killing it, doing unbelievably well. 200 unit property, you know, smaller market, you know, 90 to 100,000 person population. But so that was, that's a population of Lawrence as well. I won't go any smaller than that. I think um, it, it, it puts too much risk into the deal. But you, know, you can get a population of 90 to 100,000 people. That's a decent population. And, and we were able to, to find a nice deal in that area that made sense. Excellent. Very nice. Great story. Thank you. So any, uh, anyone else want to ask Matt a question? Yeah. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Hey, Rich. Hey, a quick question for you. When, yeah. when you start working on these deals and, and you have a certain SEC attorney that you're working with, Yep. Do you keep that one with all your projects or do you ever have a need to change it up? Uh, so I was working with, I'm not going to mention any names here because I don't want to throw anybody under, under a bus. There was one that I was working with that I loved um, as a person. And uh, they, uh, two times I had, I the two times that I worked with them, I had problems with, with uh, meeting deadlines and things of that nature. So then I moved on to another different, to a different person. And I've used that person for every deal I've done since. I, I, I was, I spoke on something last night and there was a guy who does cost segregation and was like, Hey, you know, can I reach out to you about cost segregation? I was like, yeah, you can. But like, uh, I have a relationship with somebody they consistently perform right very well. I enjoy working with them. So I'm not gonna, like I value relationships that I, that I develop with people. So I have a, 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 an SEC attorney that I love that um, knows also like I have certain things that I want in my deals and certain things that, of the way that my things are structured. And so they know that. So it makes it work very well. And as long as they deliver um, you know, on the timelines that they promise, which they have been, and their pricing is, I think, you know, commensurate with the rest of the market, right? It's, it makes sense. For me, I, I don't have any reason to necessarily leave them. Now, if, if they start not delivering or, you know, there starts to be problems, then I would open up and, and explore other options. But that's just kind of my... Um, my perspective on building long-term relationships with people and 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 being sort of a loyal customer, I guess. I hear you. Thanks. That's... Any other questions, or should we get to the fabulous prizes? 
Well, we we are coming up on the 15 minute mark, so uh, we can we can do the fabulous prizes, and then if we still have a little bit of time, we can ask a couple more questions. Okay, let's do it. So let me go back to sharing my screen. And um, all right, can you guys you guys see in this quiz time? So here's the deal. Raise your hand. Do not call out. Please, please, please do not call out. Raise your hand. Uh, you can either do it like physically and Jim will call on you or you could. there's a way to do it from the reactions down at the bottom, but like Angel just did. So raise your hand if you know the answer. Angel, you have to put your hand down. You know, I didn't ask the question yet. Angel's always super fast. Okay, so here we go. I apologize. <laughs> question number one. Who is attributed with saying perseverance is failing 19 times and succeeding on the 20th? Now, because we're doing screen share, you're going to have to use the reactions on your computer. And Angel is first up again. Go ahead, Angel. I am, but I don't remember. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the conversation. Was it, um, it was a lady. I'll give you a clue. It was not Mary Poppins. Oh, but it was Julie Andrews. It was oh. Julie Andrews. <laughs> Angel, you've won a fabulous prize. Yeah. You win a autographed copy of Backstage Guide to Real Estate. <laughs> so if you send me an email, Matt at Pacheni.com. It's really easy. It's my first name, Matt at Pacheni.com. And I know you have it, Angel. Um, <laughs> you can send me your mailing address and I will mail you a copy of the book. Here, Sign. I'll... Sign Here, copy. I'll... Ah! <laughs> I'm so excited. All right. Good. I'm glad. I hope you enjoy it. Question number two. What can you add to a deal that may have a dramatic and positive impact on your bottom line. This is this is not like a specific thing. This is just in general, like thought. Like, what can you add add to a deal that may have a dramatic and positive impact on your bottom line? Uh oh, we have someone else up. Kay Trevor. Add value. Value. That is right. Add value. Trevor, I know you probably already have one, but you win an autographed copy. Well, I don't have an autographed one. So so uh, shoot me an email with your mailing address and I'll get that in the mail to you. You're awesome. No, oh, thank you. Question number three. Fill in the blank. Explore other... Uh-oh, I don't know who came up first, but we're going to pick someone. The first one I seen was Nicole. Market. That is right. Explore other markets. Nicole, you win an autographed copy of Backstage <laughs> Guide to Real Estate. So please Yay! send me send me an email, manapacchetti.com, with your mailing address, and I'll put it in the mail for you. Okay, question number four. What are the three... Deal pillars. There's three of them. You need to know all three. What are the three deal pillars? Charlie Hardage. The sponsor, the market, and the deal. That is right. The sponsor, the market, and the deal. Excellent. Charlie, you win an autographed copy of Backstage Guide to Real Estate. Awesome. Shoot Thank me you. An email with your, you're welcome. Shoot me an email with your mailing address and we'll get that out to you. I'm losing lots of money today, man. These costs, but you know what is crazy? It costs almost as much to ship the darn things as the books themselves. Uh, okay. Um, question number five choose partners who blank, 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 blank. Rich, Rich. Kramer. Oh, no more than you do. Yes, choose partners who know more than you, like Mr. Einstein here. Excellent. Uh, send me your, your mailing address because you've won an autographed copy of the book. Uh, and the final very hard question here. Fill in the blanks. Now you know why I went over the subtitle for the book 17 times. Backstage Guide to Real Estate, Produce Passive 
write your own and direct your dollars towards Lacey. Uh oh, we might we might have lost Lacey. Let's see if I have a second hand up. Somebody better get a second hand up quick. Produce passive blank. Write your own blank and direct your dollars towards blank blank. All right, I'll 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 start. I'll give you a hand. Rich is, Rich is raising his hand again, oh, but right. I don't know if we want to let Rich win twice. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yo, someone else go. I'm done. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll start someone filling it in. Has... I'll give. I'll give. I'll give one of the answers and then see if if if, if we could get another hand up. Produce passive income. Oh, oh, Reggie hand. has his hand up. I'm going to take a crack at this. I'm going to take a crack at this. Produce passive income, write your own book, and direct your dollars towards marketing. No. Oh, see, sorry. I wasn't here. <laughs> I am sorry. Uh, anybody else? He produced passive income. I'll give you the next one. It's write your own story, right? Because the whole point of this is that you make enough income passively that you can do whatever you want. That's writing your own story. And then I'm hoping that you will direct your dollars toward helping others. Close. Another way of saying that might generational be, growth. That's generational another way wealth. of saying it. But the, <laughs> what I was looking for was um, writing your own positive change. Ah. Yeah, right. produce well, passive income, write your own story, and direct your dollars towards positive change. I think Reggie needs to get a copy. He he tried really hard there, Matt. Okay, Reggie, send <laughs> me a, an email with your mailing address, and I will mail you a signed copy of Backstage Guide to Real Estate. And I think that's about it. I mean, I think we may have a, a, a little more time if, if there are any other uh, questions out there. Um, we do. Um, I have a question, Matt. Uh, do you have a website or uh, do you want to share other ways people can get I in touch do. with you? I do. So you could just go to pacheni.com. Uh, here's what's great about pacheni.com. Not only can you uh, schedule an appointment with me from the contact page or just shoot me an email, uh, not only can you buy the book, but I, I've been posting, I think, really great blog articles about real estate. And, and some of them are, 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 are pretty uh, elementary and some of them get into some, some real weeds on different things. So I think that that uh, is going to provide a lot of value to people. So that's the blog on there. It's called the Backstage Blog. Um, I also have a monthly newsletter where I'll send out investment tips and things of that nature. So um, it's all available on Pacheni.com, P-I-C-H-E-N-Y.com. So check it out. And Matt, do you have uh, do you have a uh, call to action uh, uh, giveaway of any type on the website if nope. uh, people are going there? Nope. Okay. Nope. Just, I'm, just... I'm going to create a lead magnet at some point from some well, portion of my book, maybe. But yeah, no, there's yeah. no there's no giveaways. Only only if you join the GOB network uh, live, thousand dollars. <laughs> you get the and then you then you get no. Well, then you get to if you can answer the trivia questions, you get free books. But other than that, I'm not really doing any other giveaways or anything. Okay. Well, I want everyone to know because we did have uh, people come in all during the uh, presentation that Matt is going to be uh, one of our featured speakers at the GOB network conference coming up July 13th and 14th and uh, hoping that everyone stays uh, over the weekend to have some more in-depth networking and visit the great city of Chicago uh, and maybe see some of the uh, off-Broadway shows uh, in uh, Chicago theater district also. Okay, can I just say one thing? Go ahead. Sir. Moulin Rouge, which I am a co-producer on, is in Chicago right now. They just started the national tour. It's in Chicago right now. It won't be in Chicago when we're there. Or I would have gone and seen it. Um, but if you're in the Chicago area, go see it. It's freaking awesome. My wife flew out there uh, to, to, to see it on opening night and said it was phenomenal. So uh, go check out Moulin Rouge, uh, Jim, and anybody else who's in Chicago. It's really good. Yeah, my, my wife uh, 
loves uh, doing the shows with her girlfriend. So I'm never invited. <laughs> no, Jim, you should go though. It's a good one. It's fun. It's like, it's definitely not like your traditional musical theater. It is very contemporary, great music. I mean, it's fun, man. It's you know, fun. Matt, well, I had a broker, the broker who was on my deal that we, that, that just sold. Okay. A few weeks ago, he flew to New York <laughs> to take me out to dinner to celebrate the, the closing. Right. And he knew that, that we won the Tony for Moulin Rouge and he said he wanted to go see it. So I got us house seats and we both went house seats are like, you get to pay for them. The, the best seats in the house, they're reserved for the producers. We went, we saw the show and he was like, wow. He's like, that was so good. Like I had no idea it was going to be that good and that much fun and like so cool. And I was like, yeah, it's like a really cool contemporary show. It's not like Oklahoma. So, um, and nothing wrong with Oklahoma, but very different style. So Jim, you, I think you might want to check it out, man. You might be surprised. Well, you know, I was uh, thinking if Glengarry, uh, Glengarry Glenn Ross can make it, that's about real estate. We ought to be able to do a musical about syndication. And maybe if I can get damn it, David Mamet to write the book for the musical, it might be as good as Glengarry Glenn Ross. There you what go. a great show. What a great show. Or maybe we make a uh, an interactive version of it, like a uh, Tony and Tina's wedding. Oh, there you go. Oh, that could be really interesting. That could be interesting. That could be very interesting. All right. Uh, any other questions? We do have five more minutes. Uh, anyone want to ask uh, something of Matt? Matt, could you put your email in the uh, chat? Oh, so yes, uh, I will do that right now. But it's just my first name at my last name dot com at Pichetti dot com. And I just put that in the chat. So yeah, don't forget to email me if you want, if you want a copy of the book um, and I'll get those out soon. Any other questions for Matt? Hey, how's the property on Tesoro going? Did that, did that close? Tesoro at 12. Yeah, we closed on that a couple of months ago. Um, it's going very well. Uh, you know, we, we don't even have our first full month of financials because we closed in, in mid-March. Um, so, uh, we'll, we should be getting the April final financial, but we, we, we look at sort of the progress on a weekly basis and occupancy is good. Collections are good. So, so far it's looking very good. We're very happy with it. Um, and so we're starting to execute our value add plan. Actually, we already did the water conservation programs already been done. Uh, so yeah, things are going well. Nice. Thank you for asking Rich. Sure. And Matt, did you, a uh, quick question before we end, did you um, syndicate an apartment first or a production first? Um, well, uh, apartment, uh, my wife had uh, syndicated uh, some Broadway stuff, right? But I wasn't involved with it. We didn't know it was like, I didn't, we didn't know it was a syndication. Um, so I, I, I went to the real estate guys secrets of successful syndications when I first learned about like what syndication was and I walked away with that weekend. I don't know. I came home like Erica. I'm like, we already know what syndication is. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like the shows. I'm like, you know how it always says like 506 C on it. She's like, yeah. I'm like, that's a syndication. She's like, really? I'm like, yeah, it's a syndication. There's two kinds you can do. And there's a, and so, so it had like a private placement memorandum and a subscription agreement and the company group, like all those legal docs, like we had seen them before we had been, I just didn't know it was like a, that it was called syndication. Uh, you know, it just was like, Oh, that's how they do the Broadway shows. And, uh, it was kind of really funny. Um, obviously there's a lot more nuances to it when you're doing it for, for real estate, but, but, but like, essentially it's kind of the same thing. And I was like, Oh, wow. And uh, we don't generally know the GP team as a GP team in Broadway or in uh, TV. We generally call them something else, right? Producers. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting because when I talk about, uh, you know, Erica and I have actually been on a couple of podcasts. Um, I've done a couple of myself, but I prefer to do them with her where, um, where we'll talk about Broadway stuff because some people are like, oh, that's really interesting when you come on is, um, the, the podcast and talk about it and we'll talk about it and what what I do a lot of times is I'll translate 
or like draw analogies of, um, you know, something that, that happens on the Broadway side versus uh, on the real estate syndicators side, right? Like, like your GPs are called producers, right? Or different things like that, that we'll talk about uh, where there's, there's just a lot of similarities, but I can take like a Broadway show and like, like there's a thing uh, called like a recruitment chart. And that's basically like your pro forma, right. For real estate. So, you know, different things like that. So it's, um, yeah, it's funny. There's tons of parallels. And have you um, syndicated anything uh, other than um, the entertainment and, and apartments? Have you done anything like um, uh, an alternative asset uh, golf course or a winery or, um, you know, restaurant or something? So. I have not. I have not. Yeah. I've invested in, in some things that are not real estate or Broadway. Uh, but I've never uh, been a, a, a like a partner uh, in one of those things. Hi, Daryl. Thank you. So that kind of wraps up uh, the end of the uh, end of the uh, show. And if Matt has anything he wants to end on, we'll uh, let him take us out. Well, I just really hope that you got value out of um, out of the the talk today, and I truly do hope that you produce passive income so that you can write your own story. And then I hope that that story is going to bring some positive change into the world. So um, thanks for, for listening to me today. Thank you very much, Matt. We really appreciate you being here. And if you guys want to get an opportunity to meet Matt in person uh, and get a chance to talk to him a little more in depth, make sure that uh, you come to Chicago July 13th and 14th for the GOB Network Conference. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Hey, Jim, yes, can sir. I give you a, I think I have your number, but can I give you a, a quick call? I want to yeah. just chat with you for like two seconds. Yep. 715. Let me, hold on one second. I think I have you in here, but I want to check. Uh, I, I do not. So let me create new contact. I have your email, but not your phone. What is it again? 715. Yep. 301. 301. 0105. Zero one zero five. I'll call you in just a moment.